Well guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're at the house. We're taking some time off for the coronavirus and uh, we got things to get done. So um, just wrapping things up, working on the Dodge here and I just pulled the, let me show you. Just pulled the trailer up right outside the garage. A nice fire going, cold beverage. Uh, got the trailer pulled up right outside my garage. Got it disconnected from the truck. Gonna jack it up in the rear, get it up on jack stands, and uh, we're gonna start tearing the wheels off, the drums off, and uh, really, uh, really seeing what this trailer needs. Oh yeah, don't worry. We have proper attire on for today's job. When I think I get a break in the rain, that's why I kind of pulled it up underneath this overhang by my garage. I figured uh, I could get some work done. Start on this side here, and uh, now it's raining again. But I'm going to get these wheels popped off. And uh, would help if I had the right size socket. Guess I picked up the wrong one. Okay, now you honestly don't need very much to get this job done. Um, and I don't know how far we're going, but that will also tell us how many tools we need. But uh, at this point, I have picked out, we don't need an ax. We've got a dead blow hammer, we have a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of channel locks, my impact, and a socket for the lug nuts. Let's get these wheels off, and then, uh, then we'll go from there. The, uh, I didn't have the wrong size, actually. The, uh, front axle has different size lug nuts than the rear axle uh, since if you remember the front axle on this trailer is different from what the rear axle is uh, let's get this second wheel off and uh, we'll go from there all right guys well, I'm gonna try to keep the camera dry as possible um, I had to charge my impact to get one lug nut off that front wheel so take dead blow hammer Get the bearing cap off. No big deal. Put that in the garage. Um, now this nut on the end of the bearing or on the end of the spindle is going to have a um, cotter pin in it. That's why we got our needle nose pliers. Gonna tap that to where we can grab onto it. bearing might have been a little loose because it's already moving grease is pretty dirty let me uh there we go come on Cutter pin doesn't want to come out. Since everything's covered in grease, it gets a little slippery. Cut. All right, so cutter pin's out. Nuts loose, use the channel locks to loosen them up. Set everything aside here. You're gonna have a, uh, a bearing, a seal on the end. There's the washer. Wiggle the drum to get everything to come out. To you. It's a bearing. And now, pull the drum off. 
now with the drum off guys you can see we had a leak see all the uh, axle grease inside the brakes shows us that we had a leak from the inside seal and uh, we've got ourselves some cleaning to do so I'm gonna get on that right now all right so we got the hub off um, so I've decided since that inner seal was leaking and we've got grease all over the brakes and the brakes are original they've got probably 150,000 miles on them uh, that we're just going to go ahead and place them replace them so there's four four nuts that hold these assemblies on actually this one's got five five nuts that hold these assemblies on we'll get the the whole brake backing plate and shoe assembly taken off and then we can just get everything cleaned up and uh, we'll get a new assembly for this trailer. Got everything off of this got the two wires cut so we've got a free spindle check the spindle everything looks good there's not even really any hot marks can see where the uh, bearing rides out there on the end but uh, we'll buy a new assembly for this one uh, we're gonna get keep working on this one uh, hub stuck having a little issue getting the hub off uh, so we're gonna do some more beating on that and then that's probably it for today it's Rain's starting to come down pretty good here. And uh, honestly, I'm in no hurry, so I'm not gonna get wet working on the other side. Got everything torn down on this side. Uh, we do need brakes actually for uh, front and rear on both sides. Uh, here's the front. I don't know if you can tell the thickness. All right, focus. There's not very much left on the fronts. So, we're going to get new, four new assemblies. And uh, we're going to, of course, uh, repack the bearings and everything. But well, we got this side torn down. It's raining again, so we're going to work on the other side tomorrow. It's supposed to be 60 and sunny. So, I will catch up with you guys then. <laughs> both sides torn down and you may wonder why there's a pair of pants laying here well these are old dress pants from work my old job and that's what we're going to use to clean all the grease up with so we got each side spindle clean so the trailer itself is clean now we got to clean the hubs and repack the bearings and uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with that maybe some of you should uh, pack bearings by hand at least once in your life and you'll realize why I say I'm not going to bore you with that or probably not going to be touching the camera for a little while here. So let me get to cleaning and I'll check back up with you guys shortly. Okay, so we're going back together here. We got all new brake assemblies. They all, they come all assembled. Got them for about 55 bucks a piece. All you got to do is put them on, tighten the five nuts and then connect your wires and uh, you're pretty much good to go on those so I'm gonna get these put on real quick and then we'll move on to the bearings and the drums So for the camera's sake, we put it down while we were putting the hubs on, uh, a little greasy. So what you do, take your hub, your drum, and you put some grease inside. Uh, with the Easy Lube axles, I don't really put a whole terrible amount um, because I will lubricate through the Easy Lube part. 
Um, but what you do is put your hub on, slide your bearing in, put your um, washer on the end, and then put your nut on. And what I do with these is I snug them down, um, but you don't want them tight. But why you want to snug them down first is to um, really push the grease in, get everything nice and tight, and then you back you back this nut off. I was always told like a quarter of a turn. Uh, put your cotter pin back in as you can see and this side's pretty much done So what we'll do is we did the same this axle is different. So it doesn't have a cotter pin It has one of those that gold thing on the end of the nut, but we did the same thing on both sides and what we'll do here um, we'll fully lubricate everything and then the last thing we have to do is going to be to connect the wires uh, for the brakes themselves for the magnets themselves, so we're getting there. Um, I put the camera down because I was getting grease everywhere and it's easier if you can just get dirty one time and not worry about picking up the camera. And uh, so I got everything on, just need to snug down the other side and give them a quarter turn uh, back loose. And then uh, we'll put pretty much just uh, grease everything through the easy loop part and connect the wires and we're done with this project. All right guys, we're getting close to the end here. The other thing we need to do is connect the wires coming out of the brakes. I already did this side. Didn't shrink wrap anything or tape anything up yet um, because I'm going to connect, pull the truck up there, connect it and make sure everything works before I put the wheels back on and put everything back together. So that's eight total wires, two, four on each axle and uh, I just use regular buck connectors. Um, don't do anything fancy because I usually, if I have an issue, I figure I cut a butt connector off and put a new one in or whatever is a lot easier than when everything's all shrunk wrap, tidy, and it's whatever. Just make sure your wires don't get cut up, caught up in your drums or your wheel, and uh, you'll be fine. So uh, let me, I only have four left to do. I decided to jump out here and take a break because I hop down in the middle of the trailer and come in this way to get to them a little easier because you can see everything but a little tight under there so hold tight guys we'll get that finished up and then um yeah we are uh, we're just about done just like that we are done except for we need to adjust manually adjust the brakes because these are the manual style um don't need to go over all that for you guys toe piglet actually has a good video where he manually adjusts brakes and shows you guys how um, so I did hook it up to the truck and just made sure everything worked, the brakes worked, and they do, so we're, we did it. Um, I'd say if I worked on this constant and didn't mess around, drink beer, do other things, I'd probably say about, allow yourself, if it's a first time, probably about six hours, and if you've done it more than once, I probably had about four hours maybe in it total. Um, if that most of it was me just messing around so thanks for watching guys if you're still here at this point in the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys on the next one hopefully hopefully we'll be back on the road here soon